Introduction to Chemical Bonding and the Octet Rule. And the question we're going to answer here is, why do bonds form? So chemical bonding can be described as a force that binds atoms together to form molecules or ionic compounds. And so what we're going to find out in this section, in this unit, is why. Why does that help their stability and why do they form bonds? The bottom line is that chemical bonds form because the overall energy of bonded atoms is less than atoms have separately. So if we were to take all of the separate atoms, they would have a certain amount of energy, but if we allow them to bond with each other in either covalent or ionic bonds, then that overall energy would be lower, and so that's very favorable. So one of the main concepts in bonding is something called a noble gas electron configuration. If atoms, different you know, elements, if they can achieve eight electrons in their valence shell, then they will be more stable. And so atoms in molecules or ionic substances, they form bonds so that they can get this noble gas configuration of electrons. And this noble gas configuration in general is eight electrons. Now the exception to that is of course hydrogen and helium. Helium requires two electrons for a closed valence shell. And so hydrogen's goal is to get to two electrons in the valence shell. Okay, so let's take a look at neon. And neon is a noble gas. And in general, neon doesn't form ions or covalent bonds under normal circumstances. And so here's a representation of neon. So here's all the protons in the nucleus, which of course is not to scale. The core electrons are in n equals 1, and then there are eight valence electrons in n equals 2, which would be 2s and 2p. So the electron configuration would be 2s2, 2p6. Neon is a noble gas with eight electrons in its valence shell. And this electron configuration is especially stable. Now, not all elements have eight electrons in their valence shells, so they have to figure out a way to either share or remove electrons in order to achieve that noble gas configuration with eight electrons in the valence shell. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of the number of valence electrons according to group. Okay, so group one, all of those elements have one valence electron. Group two has two valence electrons. Now, elements on this side of the periodic table, so the alkaline metals and the alkaline earth metals, both of these lose electrons to achieve the previous noble gas electron configuration. Okay, so for instance, magnesium, if we remove one, two electrons, then we're gonna be, then magnesium would have the electron configuration of neon, which is a noble gas, of course. Okay, same with calcium. If calcium removes two, if it loses two electrons, it will have the noble gas configuration of argon. Potassium only has to lose one to have the electron configuration for argon. So finishing off the main group here, so group three has three valence electrons, group four has four valence electrons, and five five valence electrons. Now these guys often participate in covalent bonding and we're going to discuss that in this unit. And then we've also seen that oxygen often forms an ion with a negative two charge. And so you can see that if oxygen gains two electrons, so this is 2p4, if it gains one, two more, then it's going to have 2p6. And of course with the 2s electrons, that makes eight electrons in the valence shell giving it an electron configuration just like neon. So oxygen gains two to have an electron configuration like neon. Sulfur could gain two to have an electron configuration like argon. Fluorine gains one to have an electron configuration like neon. So like I say, these actually, they can form covalent or ionic compounds. We'll see both. We have mostly seen them participating in ionic compounds. So atoms form bonds to obtain a noble gas configuration. And so there's two different types of bonds 
main, you know, main types of bonds that are formed. One is ionic bonds, and so those are the opposite charged ions that are attracted to each other with a coulombic attraction. And then there's covalent bonds, which we're going to discuss a lot more, and that's where electrons are shared. Now, covalent bonds can be either polar or nonpolar, and what polar means is that they are unequally shared. So one of them is hogging the electrons, but not enough to actually take them away and form an ion, but it's an unequal sharing where the nonpolar bonds, it's a essentially equal sharing of electrons. All right, so let's just remind ourselves about ionic bonds. And so these are electrostatic attractions, so they're columbic attractions between oppositely charged ions. Recall that cations are formed when an atom loses electrons, and so that leaves excess charge from the nucleus when electrons are lost. Anions form when an atom gains electrons, and ionic bonds are generally formed between metals and nonmetals. And so we saw that in Unit 2, so if you need a reminder about cations and anions, then you should go to the sections covering, you know, why do anions and cations form, and what are ionic compounds. All right, so we're going to look at this just a little bit differently now, though. So these are Lewis dot representations. So here's sodium with its one valence electron. Here's fluorine with its seven valence electrons. So neither one of these two is as stable as it could be. In fact, they're quite unstable. So they have a large difference in electronegativity. So we're remembering our periodic trends. Fluorine is the most electronegative element. Sodium is not electronegative particularly. And so what happens is that the very electronegative fluorine comes over here and snatches that electron and forms a fluoride anion. And sodium just gives away that electron so that it can have an electron configuration like neons. Okay, So sodium loses an electron. So it can have an electron configuration the same as neon, which is a noble gas, which gives it eight electrons in the valence shell. Now fluorine, it's, we can see that there are eight electrons now around this fluoride anion, and now fluoride anion has the same electron configuration as neon. So both of them have an octet. They form oppositely charged ions, and an ionic bond forms. So when the electronegativity is similar, that's when covalent bonds form. And covalent bonds involve sharing of electrons. So we know that hydrogen is a diatomic element. So we don't find just hydrogen atoms hanging out by themselves. It's H2. These two hydrogens basically share their two electrons. And then each can attain a noble gas configuration like helium. Okay, so each of these hydrogens owns one electron, we could say. If they get together and share, then they can both enjoy a noble gas configuration just like helium. So that would be 1s2. So each of them can have that configuration. So that's why hydrogen comes as a diatomic molecule as opposed to separate hydrogen atoms. Another thing that we need to keep in mind, and this will come up more as we talk about hybrid orbitals, but each of these hydrogens has one electron in the 1s orbital. So here's a 1s orbital for each hydrogen. And covalent bonds form when orbitals overlap. So this is how that sharing occurs. So let's take these two 1s orbitals and overlap them, and now we have a covalent bond. So this is an orbital representation of a covalent bond. Here's our Lewis dot structure showing this covalent bond. So the 1s orbitals on each hydrogen overlap and form this covalent bond where they share two electrons. And both of them can enjoy a noble gas configuration like helium. OK, so the octet rule. This tells us that S block and P block, which is the main group, 
in the second period and below on the periodic table prefer to be surrounded by eight electrons. And so the, that eight electrons is a noble gas configuration. So these electrons can be shared or unshared. And when electrons are shared, we call them bonding pairs. So bonding electron pairs. And when they're unshared, we call them lone pairs. We're going to see a representation of that soon. So for instance, here are the Lewis dot symbols for hydrogen and oxygen. And we're going to put together a water molecule. And we're going to do that by sharing valence electrons between hydrogen and oxygen. So hydrogen has one valence electron. Each of these hydro hydrogens has one to contribute. And oxygen has two unpaired electrons. And basically, oxygen will share one of these electrons with hydrogen, hydrogen will share with oxygen, and same thing on the other side. And after they start sharing, then each hydrogen enjoys two electrons, can share two electrons, and we can see that oxygen now has eight electrons surrounding it. And so this is achieved through sharing electrons, and these are covalent bonds. And so at the end, hydrogen can have a noble gas configuration like helium and have two electrons in its valence shell. And oxygen can have eight valence electrons just like neon. And all that is achieved through sharing electrons. Now we usually draw the Lewis structure for water like this. So this line represents two electrons, so two shared electrons. And so where we had dots on the previous slide, now we've just replaced it with a line. These electrons here are called lone pairs, and those only belong to oxygen. Okay, so, and they, we keep them paired up. So there's one lone pair, there's the other lone pair. Here are two electrons being shared, here are two electrons being shared. So oxygen still has eight electrons surrounding it, and each of the hydrogens has two. Okay, and so overall, this is called a Lewis structure for water. And the last thing to note here is that the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is a polar covalent bond. So that's an unequal sharing. Oxygen is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen. Okay, so let's talk about nonpolar covalent bonds. And when atoms have relatively equal electronegativity, they form nonpolar covalent bonds. And that just means that electrons are shared relatively equally. Now, the electronegativity for carbon and hydrogen isn't exactly the same, but it's very, very similar. So we consider carbon-hydrogen bonds to be nonpolar bonds. So again, going from the Lewis dot structure, so carbon has four valence electrons. Each hydrogen has one. When Everybody shares. You can see carbon is surrounded by eight valence electrons, and each hydrogen has two. And the Lewis structure showing these shared electrons as a line instead of dots. Okay? And so this is methane. So this is the Lewis structure for methane, showing eight electrons around carbon, two in each of those lines, each of those bonds, and two around each hydrogen shown as a line as well. Okay, so polar covalent bonds. Now, if one of the atoms has a higher electronegativity than the other, but it's not high and so high that one of them just takes an electron away from the other, that's a very large electronegativity difference. But if it's somewhere intermediate, then a polar covalent bond will form. And this is where electrons are shared unequally between the atoms involved in the bond. So there, there's not an equal sharing. And again, you know, if you have a really high electronegativity difference, you're probably going to have a largely ionic bond. But if the electronegativity difference is significant but not huge, then you'll have a polar covalent bond and electrons will still be shared, but it won't be an equal sharing. So two molecules that demonstrate this. So we already mentioned that oxygen is a lot more electronegative than hydrogen. So that is a polar covalent bond. 
and oxygen draws more electron density toward itself and so it's kind of greedy and it takes more electron densities toward itself and away from hydrogen so even though those electrons are shared it's not an equal sharing and same thing in carbon tetrafluoride so each of these carbon fluorine bonds is a polar covalent bond so fluorine is drawing more electron density toward itself and away from carbon so those are polar covalent bonds each individual bond is a polar covalent bond and an, has an unequal sharing of electrons alright so the next video will be exceptions to the octet rule